this project will be based around a map view, asking users to add locations of places they want to visit one day. To do that, we're going to add a full screen map view. We'll track its center coordinates. We'll track whether the user's editing details right now or not. We'll track which annotations they want to show and more. So we're going to start with a full screen map view. That's the easy part. We'll also place a transparent blue circle over its center to mark the center point of the map. Now, yes, we've got to bind our map to some kind of map region, so we'll know its center coordinate anyway, but we don't have to use that for this transparent blue center marker. That'll be done just by being in a Z stack automatically. So go ahead and add an import for MapKit. Then add a property inside content view to store the map's current state. We'll say at state private var map region is an MK coordinate region with a center and a span. Center's location coordinate 2D, latitude I'll say is 50, longitude zero, and span will be an MK coordinate span with this delta of 25 and 25. And that'll start the map so it shows most of Western Europe and North Africa by default. Now we can go ahead and fill in this body property. We'll say a Z stack with a map inside binding its coordinate region to our dollar map region. Ignoring safe areas, it goes edge to edge. And over that will be a circle filled with blue with opacity of 0.3 and then a frame of width 32, height 32. Just big enough to be visible and nice and clear on the screen. Go ahead and run the app now. Hopefully when that does so, you can see it uh, working, move, move the map around freely, zoom in, zoom out. But there'll always be our little blue circle in the middle showing us where the center of our map actually is, the bit of thing we're working with right now. Now all this work by itself isn't terribly interesting, so the next step is to add a button down here in the bottom right where legal is currently, or, or tune is perhaps. Um, they'll let us add place marks to the map. And we're already inside a Z stack right here. And so the easiest way to add this button over our map is to place it inside a V stack and then inside a H stack with spaces before each time. So the spacer pushes it down and then pushes it to the trailing edge. Um, both those spaces will occupy the full vertical and horizontal space left over. And so it'll just leave the button in the bottom right corner here. We'll add some functionality here shortly, but first let's just put it in place and then make sure it looks good. We'll say there's a V-stack below the circle with a spacer to push everything down. Then inside there's a H-stack uh, with another spacer, push everything to the trailing edge. And then we'll say here's a button, let's scroll down slightly, that will uh, create a new location. And for the label of that, we'll have just image with system name of plus, traditional plus icon. Then for styling, I'll say it has a little bit of padding and a background, I'll give black opacity 0.75, so a little bit translucent black. Then a foreground color of white, so it stands out properly. We'll do a font of title that's nice and big. Then a clip shape of circle. And finally, padding uh, with dot trailing. So we're actually adding the padding modifier twice here, once before we add the background, so the background doesn't go tight around the text. And then once that's all done and clipped nicely and so forth, then we add some extra padding so it stays away from the trailing edge. It doesn't go right to the very edge of the screen. Now, that's the easy part. Where things get interesting is how we place locations on the map. Now, we've bound the location of our map and the zoom of our map to this map region uh, state value here. But now we wanna send in an array of locations into our map uh, based on what they've added previously. And this takes a few steps, starting with, of course, uh, the basic definition of the location we wanna store in the first place. Uh, and this needs to conform to a few protocols, one is identifiable, so we can make a whole bunch of these dynamically in SwiftUI. One is codable, so later on we can save and load data smoothly. And one is equatable, so we can find one particular location in a whole array of them easily. Now in terms of the data it will contain, we'll give each location a name and description, plus a latitude and longitude. We'll also have to have a unique identifier for the identifiable protocol. 
So if you I can create them dynamically. So this is all a new struct type. We'll say command n make another new Swift file. Call this one location.swift. Then go ahead and add those protocols and those properties. So I'll say struct location is identifiable and codable and equatable. Has an ID, UUID. Has a name string. I'll make that one variable actually. I'll explain why in a second. And a description string. Then latitude double and longitude double. Um, now, this behind the scenes will become a CL location coordinate 2D, but that does not conform to codable out of the box, sadly, whereas double does. So storing them separately gives us codable conformance for free, which is always nice to have. Now, I said I'd explain why these two are variable and the rest are constant. Um, the ID is fixed. Location is location. It always is, no matter what it is, the same one. Latitude and longitude it doesn't move, I don't think, normally. Um, but the name and description, they have to be modifiable by the user. They can change these two values later on. Okay, that's our location. And now we have the concept of what one location is, that's our struct right here. We can go ahead and make an array of those to store all the places the user wants to visit at some point. Now, this is going to go into content view right now, just so we can get moving. But we'll return to it again later on, uh, so you can add more to it. So first things first, into content view, we'll say at state private var locations is an array of location. Next, whenever we press this button down here, create new location, we want to add a new location to that. So we'll just say in here, uh, let new location is a location with ID of UUID, name of uh, new location, description will be an empty string. Latitude we can get from our map, we can say map region dot center dot latitude and say for longitude, map region dot center dot longitude. Finally, we want to update content view so it sends in our locations array um, to be used for the map. Now remember this thing here, this new location, this needs to go into an array that we just made and that we passed into our map. So we make a location, add it to the array, pass the array to the map and tell it how to draw each pin. So we will say here, uh, locations append new location that's now in the array and then for our map up here we want to pass in that as the annotation items locations give me one location coming in and for now we'll say there is a map marker with a coordinate being a CL location coordinate 2d latitude longitude will be location dot latitude latitude and location dot longitude oops dot, come on dot longitude there we go and no tint like that uh, and that's our improved map version so hopefully now as i've made some comedy mistakes uh we can press command r to build and run our code yeah it looks good to me let's give it a try and give it an actual experiment you know i can go over here to, to london or so press plus there we go it's a little map marker then one over here the border of Wales, and then one in Wales somewhere. There we go. So that works really nicely. Now, I also took quite a bit of code to get this sort of up and running, um, but at least hopefully you can see the, the basics of the app starting to come together already.